Welcome to the Lantern Light Podcast. Lantern Light is an artist collective, publication, and promotional platform focused on shedding light on the talented artists of our hometown of New Orleans, Louisiana, and beyond. Follow us at lanternlightinc.com for updates on future podcasts, live recording sessions, and more. I'm your host, Kyle Erosh, and today we have Tristan Kerner of the band Acadiana Trace in the studio to talk about their brand new record, Born Again, which came out about four weeks ago. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys do as well. What's up, man? Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Cool, dude. Um, so just had an EP come out, uh, Born mm-hmm. Again, right? Yeah, yeah. And that came out, what, maybe? August 10th. So about a month ago? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, how's uh how's reception for it been and how's how was the the show you guys had last week? It's been the feedback so far for that's been fucking awesome. I've been loving the feedback for the Born Again EP and the show was it was gnarly. It was tight. Hell yeah, who'd you we guys have with you? Uh Rich Octopus, Poster Child, and Oh, I feel like a dick. <laughs> um and uh doctors doctors hell yeah yeah post trials the homies from uh shout out home gang yeah i knew val from um we played inter intracoastal yeah. about a year ago and uh i had met val yeah and when i saw val had started poster child i was like holy shit i've got to get these guys yeah dude yeah <laughs> i'm like really proud of them too because val's the, all those dudes are good at music and i'm just stoked that they're like got their own band together but that's sick dude yeah have you uh have you seen the little like Louisiana Artist Collective that uh Val started? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Shout out Val, everyone yeah. look up Louisiana Art Art Collective? Art Collective yeah, that's it. on yeah. Facebook. And uh your boy will give you an invite. Accept <laughs> the invite. Hell yeah. But yeah, man, that's cool, dude. Uh unfortunately I wasn't able to make it. But uh yeah, I guess let's get into it, man. So what's uh how long has Acadia Tra- Acadiana Trace been a band for? And maybe maybe before I, I ask the uh, the question of like how it began is what where did you get the name? The name was actually <laughs> when I was like eighteen years old. So there was this um, there's this neighborhood out in Marrero because I'm originally from Lafitte, mm-hmm. West Bank, Best Bank. Mm-hmm. You heard shout out Wank. Yeah, you know. But um, so there was this this uh, neighborhood near my uh, near my friend's house called Acadiana Trace. I had no fucking idea what that meant. I just thought it sounded cool, and I was like, one day I'm gonna name a band after that. And I had already like hyped myself up over it, and then I found out what it meant, and I was like, fuck. What does it mean? It pretty much means Louisiana. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like Googled uh, Acadiana Trace to find the band camp or something, and it. I think it brought up the neighborhood. It, it will, yeah. Even if you YouTube it, you'll find, like, <laughs> before you find my band, you're going to find, like, <laughs> neighborhoods Hell yeah, on dude. YouTube. Hell the yeah. The neighborhood on YouTube. Yeah. I like it, though. It's a good little <laughs> inception story. So, yeah, how, how long have you been How long have you been personally been playing music, and how long has a candy and a trans, trace shit, I always do that, been I, a thing? I started playing when I was about 12 years old. My uncle had taught me how to play guitar, and I just kind of took that and ran with it. And I've been in, like, little bands and stuff here and there since probably 2009, so Mm -hmm. a good solid 10 years now. And I formed Acadiana Trace in 2000. I I started it in 2016. It was really just me, and I was just going to do, like, a little studio bedroom project. Mm -hmm. And I showed my ex-bass player... And he was like really into it, so we started just we started the band with it. And by 2017, I had dropped an LP. I look at it now as a demo LP. Hell yeah! And um, I had recorded that with Nick from Nomad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, shout out Nomad. Yeah, homies. Yeah, good dudes. Cool. Yeah. So you guys have out. So now it's uh, it's that beginning lp uh, like a single and then this this new ep that just came out last month yeah yeah the singles on the ep okay so, okay yeah. cool hell yeah man yeah. yeah dude big fan so uh thank you have you always been like a i guess like that midwest emo sound yeah That's, pretty much i'd say since about 2014 it's yeah it's been your thing let's see yeah I fuck with it yeah hell yeah dude yeah i have the weirdest though like i listen to everything same anything like my all time probably my all time favorite artist ever is Mac Miller. Raw IP dude. Like rip bro. He's about to, it's almost been a year now. Damn really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fucking wild, dude. That yeah. hit everybody so hard. <laughs> Fuck dude. Everyone, 
everyone likes Mac Miller, dude. Dude, he's the best. <laughs> and, you know, Ariana, I don't know what you did to my boy, but, like, Aww. I don't know, girl. No. Nah. I don't know. But, um, mm. yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah, I don't know. Right now, so in the band I play in, you know, we're playing, like, math rock stuff. But just, like, I mean, the Midwest emo has, like, got the math rock influence and all that stuff. I just feel mm. like it's a... It's had, like, a resurgence in the last couple of years, I guess, oh, yeah. with, like, I mean, American football coming back and all that stuff. I, so. li- I liked American football. I like LP2. I fucking love LP2, but mm. I I can't get into LP3. That's I, the new one? Yeah. It's LP3. just way different. It's, it's like post-Rocky. Yeah. I saw someone say the other day that American football is overrated, and at this point, I, I see it. Well, dude, it's just, like, a meme now. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, yeah. But, uh, that song's a meme. Fuck, what's the name of the song? Never meant. Never meant. It's a meme. Yeah. But. I mean, that riff slaps still. But, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no, it's it's weird how popular that band got. Like, no, yeah, really. It's, I mean, but that's what's cool about it. Like, LP1, the 99 LP is, like, to me, that's I mean, one of the most special Fuck right, it was ahead of its time. Or at yeah. that time, they were just doing some tight shit. It's, it's cool to see that they're a band still. It's just wild that... You know that they're a band again, and they're so freaking popular. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah. wild. But it's, um, music's a beautiful thing, man. Oh yeah, dude, <laughs> nah, for sure, man. But yeah, no. So I, th- I think in and like I, I probably said this on every episode of this podcast that I don't know. Right now, New Orleans music scene and music scene in general is just man. It's so many bands right now, dude. I love it. Dude, I'm tight. so proud of it. I'm. It's dope. It's it's beautiful, dude. It's great. There's so many good bands. Hell yeah. That's yeah. why like I feel like now it's so easy to book shows with bands that we could play with. Like I'm not playing it's not like two thousand eleven no. anymore where I'm where I'm playing shows with Deathcore bands, fucking pop punk, one pop punk band, one deathcore band, one fucking metalcore band. And that's you know, like, it's, that's like ninety percent of the bands. That yeah, play yeah, the now, same yeah. shows with with each other all the time. No, now, dude, this like there's so many bands here that I can't even like keep up with it, and I would like to think that I'm fairly involved, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so it's like, and it, what's cool is is even like, dude, like the mix bills are tight, like mm-hmm. you know, like everyone fucks with each other. Mm-hmm. It's cool. It's a good community, and hopefully, shit like this just makes it even better. And you know, like this podcast was an idea I had, and it's like, dude, like. I don't have to go look for anybody to get on this podcast. Like, no, you know what I no, mean? No, people are going to want to do this. Well, there's just so like, many bands. <laughs> like, you know, it's cool. Like, and I don't know. I think it's really special. And I think, I think in general, just people with how crazy politics are and the earth is fucking going to melt in the next two years. I think, you know, yeah. people need some music, bro. No, they do. Fucking do. It's been so fucking hot okay this is what i want to say dude this is what i want to say people people have their reservations and want to say what they want to say about you know global warming and the effect emissions have on the state of our ozone and all this shit but i will say dude like my little hipster self i would always wear black skinny jeans always never not wear black skinny jeans yeah no matter what bro i've i i cannot wear pants now i can't wear pants now dude I swear, like, I just know that if global warming's re- re- a lot, the earth is a lot hotter because I can't mm-hmm. wear pants, bro. It's not an option. Like, I yeah. would just be like, oh, it's going to suck, but I'm going to wear pants. Nah, your boy ain't wearing pants no more. So, you know, we burning up. Shit's, go- shit's crazy, but at least uh, we have the arts. Yeah, I mean, as a, I, I, maybe, maybe I'm inaccurate as fuck about this, but I remember as, when I was younger, it would not be hot at night. Like at night, it wouldn't be hot, but now it's like oh, it's hot. It's fucking even worse at night now. Oh, dude, it's hot. It's, it's muggy. Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, man. So, uh, so a little bit more on your background, like, so you, you're playing, you're like, you're writing most of the stuff for this band, um, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, like, what did when you grew up, like, playing music, like, what was your first instrument? Guitar. Guitar, yeah. and that's like yeah. still your main mm-hmm. instrument, yeah. right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I uh, started, um, I kind of strayed away from that in high school because I was doing vocals for, like, metalcore bands and shit. And What metalcore bands, dude? Uh, Come on, dog. <laughs> Come on, dog. So, uh, <laughs> I don't care. I'll say it, dude, straight up. But uh, when I was, um, 
like 16, I was in this really shitty fucking band called In Living Agony. Word, I don't remember. For like a fucking... Trying to remember if I can pull back from like the high ground days. No, no. For like, for like four months. Hell yeah. And we just embarrassed ourselves, played about three shows, and then I called it quits. Me mm-hmm. and my best friend both quit at the same time, and we started doing pop punk stuff. Oh, word. And um, they continued and just, you know, mm-hmm. they did their thing. They broke up like two years after we had quit. And then I had started this band with Nick from Nomad oh, okay. in 2014 called Southeast. Okay. And uh, one of my best friends from high school, he never played an instrument, was never in a band, but had like an incredible singing voice. We got him to come in and uh, lay vocals down on all the tracks. And we released one song and then it fell through. And then I just started AT. Cool. So you had always been doing vocals in your projects as well. Mm-mm. The AT was actually the first one I had done like singing on. Cool. I'd ever, yeah. Yeah, I think your your vocals really fit that. I guess like I'm gonna keep saying that Midwest emo vibe. I don't uh, know. What do you? What would? What would you <laughs> self describe your sound and Katie and Trace as? Emo power jazz. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's I'm tight joking, though. I mean, I like it. No, I'll, I'll go with it. If if somebody was like, "Yo, emo power jazz," I'm I'm trying to listen to it. No, nah, man. I mean, I I started off as uh, going more for the Midwest stuff. Yeah, I, you can definitely hear that in the first record. Yeah, and um, now like. You know, recording with Jonathan, mm-hmm. you know, Concrete. Yeah. I, uh, shout out. It's, yeah, shout out Jonathan. We uh, have fucking, like, it's it's something else now. Like, I feel like it's it's maturing and it's yeah. becoming kind of its own thing. I'm going with that. I want it to evolve every record. I want a Kate Anna Trace to grow into something new. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. For sure, dude. Uh, just on, like, riffs and, like, guitar playing, like, what's some of your biggest influence, like, um, right now, and I guess... This whole come up with this band, you know? Uh, I've Mike Kinsella from American Football, The Obvious. Yeah. Um, I love Brand New. Dude. The guitar playing dude. Brand New is my... Bro, that's <laughs> the most nostalgic shit in the world, is, dude. Dude, that is my favorite fucking band. That just hits my fucking 16-year-old year, oh. dude. It gets me, dude. <laughs> it gets me hard. Not, not, not saying that's a bad thing, like... That shit still no. slaps. I love those. Like, dude, mm. Dejan Tendu and Devil and God, dude. That's my shit, bro. Yeah. That, that'll just put me in the feels. And uh, I probably cried over Jesse Lacey more than most women. So it's all right, dude. You no, know, it's, yeah, it's... That's the boy, dude. Yeah. Yeah, uh, besides all that weird shit. But, yeah, fuck him. Yeah. Honestly, like, I've Little narcissistic Jesse. motherfucker, but God damn it, dude. He dude, writes tight songs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> me and him have the same birthday, too. July 10th. Damn. We have the same birthday. Damn, like, fucker. But yeah, it's it's sad. It's it is what it is, though. I mean, uh, Waxahachie, Word. I fuck with uh, yeah. Katie Crutchfield from Waxahachie. She's a great guitarist. Uh, Mac DeMarco, John Mayer. I'm starting to really like open up to dude get into that shit. He's a fucking savage. Yes. Speaking he's of, I want to play. I still haven't played his PRS. Sig. I want to. Yeah. They're nice. C and M has a bunch of them. They're just fucking expensive. Yeah. Right. I didn't even know he had a yeah. PRS. PRS Strad, dude. That's like his thing now. Like cool, cool. like a year or two ago, put out a sig and uh it's sick, it's sexy. But uh anyway, yeah, but um yeah, I have fucking a billion influences with guitar and music alone. So what guitars did you guys use to record uh the EP? I used my Fender Professional Jazzmaster. It's Ooh. a 2017. Yeah. Nice. Is that is it American? It's American. Oh yeah. Yes, the U.S. professional. Yeah, the professional. Have you seen those yet? No, no. What is that? Like, what's the? Is that just like an American Deluxe or like? It's a. It's like a. It's the series, the American Professional series. Watch American. Oh, let me check this out, dude. Professional. (laughs) It's got like stock electronics and everything in it. Sure, it sounds Mm -hmm. sick. I mean, Fender stock electronics normally sound good. Oh yeah, it's this. That's the same color you have. No, no. I'm gonna pull up. Use that guitar on the whole record. That's the color. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, I use that, and on one song, I use that uh, Mustang. Cool. Yeah, is it? F- it's the attic. Okay. The attic. If you pay attention, the guitar tones a tad a bit, bit like twangier. rougher. Yeah. Yeah. Is it P nineties in the professional? P nineties in the professional, and there was P nineties in the uh, in the Mustang. It was the uh, the P ninety Mustang. It was it was the Paul Ferro. Yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah! P nineties yeah. are great. Mm-hmm. 
It's super sick. Yeah, it was cool, but I'm I traded the Mustang with Nick from Nomad from to get my old Telecaster back. My old, oh wait, that was your Telecaster originally. Originally, yeah. Then, then he then took you, it and relicked it, and and now you got it back. I got it back. Yeah. Damn, dude. Mm-hmm. I missed it. Baby's home, dude. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Cool, dude. Well, I'm sure we'll hear that thing on some new recordings sooner or later. Yeah, and live. Hell yeah, that's, that's your main live. You keeping the professional? Uh, oh, I use both. I use yeah. I use the um, telly for the open stuff, the open tuning stuff. So I, I play in open E, and I actually have a song in open D. Cool. Are, is everything in open E other than like open, once? Like, are you playing like most of the whole set in like that open tuning, and you have another open tuning? I have. I play in two open tunings, and I play in a half step, half step down. Word. Yeah. So you bring. Three guitars? Uh, well, I uh, actually have like kind of like my guitarist helped me kind of transpose the one song that's an open D. Uh-huh. He helped me transpose it into uh, and so where I can pl- stay in the open E tuning and play it. Where? So, Do you just like have to move capo or something? No, no. Where? Actually, I'll. Do you I'll use capo on anything? It's pretty crazy. Oh yeah, I use capo on on the first record. I use capo a lot, but on. This new uh, set list, I just use capo on one song. I'm born again. Word. Born again's technically in standard. Word. It's capoed on the second. What what uh what did you guys use for a guitar tone? Cause it slaps. <clears throat> I ran my pedal board through it. I uh, like you know di. Yeah. And two actually the fuck. Oh, he you know he uses a Kemper. Yeah, definitely. He ran my twin. Yeah. He used my twin. We used a Vox AC one uh, AC thirty. Hell yeah. Used a Vox AC thirty. Uh, like I said, I ran my pedal board. I use um, I used the fucking, the Empress multi drive. Dude, hell yeah! I use the Empress multi drive on it. You know what that is, right? Yeah. The uh, Empress stuff, sick. Yeah, uh, I use a lot. I love fucking Rougarou pedals. Yeah, dude. Shout yes. out Rougarou. Shout out Wonder Kid. Shout out Nathan and Kara and Ryan and Max. Yeah. Those are homies and Adrian. Right. Um, no, but I use their uh. I use their Sasquatch compressor. Oh, hell yeah. I actually bought that from Chad. Yeah, yeah. He told yeah. me he had a one. Word. Yeah, that. I used my... I use a fucking Super Chorus by Boss. I use that on the EP. Um, and a Clean Boost. You use a Twin Live? Twin Live, yeah. Yeah. It's the Fender Twin. That's the yeah. pedal platform, bro. It's a loud-ass fucking amp. I love it, honestly. Yeah, I, I need, a, a lot. I need yeah. to get one for the stew. Yeah, you do. That'd be a great addition. Did uh, did Spieben do bass on the EP? Mm-mm. I recorded the bass. I recorded it with um, actually like two basses. I used the uh, Fender Precision. That's my yeah preference. Yeah. And then I ended up selling it, and I used a jazz bass. Where on like half and half, pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah. So I think two songs, two or three songs, had the P bass and. About three songs have the uh, jazz bass. But Hell yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Rugaru, they just put out a new website and everything looks really nice. And everyone should go check out Rugaru Pedals and Ooh. support a local pedal company from uh, good old Louisiana, mm-hmm. making tight shit. All right, man. And uh, are there any are there any songs off you know the EP that I guess are really important to you that maybe you'd want people to know the meaning behind lyrically or, you know, I guess what, you know, you had in mind when you wrote these songs, you know, like the attic is like one of my favorite ones. The attic. Yeah. Yeah. So the attic, the attics, um, the attic would be more about being, you know, they say home is where, you know, you know, home is where the heart is. Home's where you, I, that's more of like a fear of dwelling on your upbringing, where you come from, whether you come from a broken home, domestic abuse, anything like, you know, where you come from. It's just a fear of that, of dwelling back, is going back to that and ending up being there again. So that's kind of like a fear of any, it's like com- almost comparing that feeling to being isolated in an attic. So yeah, addicts uh, uh kind of creepy. Yeah. It's a creepy it's, vibe, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Headlights is my favorite track. That's, that's the last song on the the record. That's my favorite. Yeah. I wanted to 
Yeah, I captured like exactly, like it was just like an emotion that I just really wanted to go after and catch. And I feel like I nailed that one perfectly. I thought that was going to be the hardest one to get. And I got that pretty well. That song to me is questioning exactly what happens after you die. You know, what if on the other side, Mm -hmm. what if they know and they want to tell us like, you know, I mean, it's just kind of like, just. It's one of the greatest uh, mysteries of the human experience, bro. Yeah. For sure. Um, All these songs, like, how old are these songs? So, okay. So, um, the only one that I've written in 2019 is I Feel Pathetic. That's actually the newest thing I had written. And I kind of, I had, it's funny because I had, uh, I had just bought a Mustang, a Fender Mustang, mm-hmm. and I was fucking around with it. And I wrote the opening riff to it. And I just was just sitting there, and I just ended up writing a whole new song. And I was like, holy shit, I love this. This is going to go on the EP. So that's that's that. Um, King of the Southeast, I'd written that one about a year ago. So that one, 2018, I'd written that one. Uh, Born Again, I had... Been working on that one since probably 2017. I had written mm-hmm. the, the opening guitar riff and just didn't know what to do with it for so long. And then by the end of last year, I just finally started piecing it together. And that was the first song I had recorded with Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Did the, um, you had like all these like pretty much wrapped up and finished before you got into the studio? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Attic was a re record, and so was Please Take Care of Yourself. The Attic was. My, like probably the the most popular one from the first record, a critical season. Yeah, and uh, people, you know, people like that one the most. And I was like, man, I've got to re-record this one because yeah, yeah. that's that one's a banger. And uh, please take care of yourself was the closing track on a critical season. It was like it was originally an acoustic track. Cool. And my uh, when I had started playing shows again with Acadiana Trace, we had decided to make that one into a full band song and we had written it as a full band and i went into the studio and did that one recorded please take care of yourself and headlights was something i just i had written over time Mm -hmm. for the last year had you guys played a lot of shows in the last few years we played i want to say about six shows in 2017 about three Probably only three shows last year. I wasn't mm. up to it. Yeah. Last year, I was not the best year. I did not have much interest. I just couldn't. I And, like, well, I don't know. And this year, it's just fucking, it's bomb. This year is great. I feel like, like everyone I've, is just hitting it, though. Yeah, everyone's doing great. Some super fucking bands out, out here now. I feel that. Sometimes you need to take a step away to come back hard. Oh, yeah, definitely. Can't, like, burn out on music. It's a shitty thing. Yeah, I didn't know i acadiana and trace was actually at a standstill a year ago i didn't know if i wanted to continue doing that i was at a crossroads where i didn't know if i wanted to do that or start something new or you know i think everyone gets there all artists kind of get there mm. so absolutely mm-hmm. yeah so i guess moving on like so this ep just dropped and i mean you're gonna be supporting that for a little bit but yeah. you know as us all like what where do you want to see this band go you know from here from here, I have plans. I'm going back to the studio in November, and I plan on recording two tracks because I want to do a split EP with someone. I'm, we're trying to find a good band to do a split with, and I then want to start recording LP2 or LP1. I'm not really sure what we're going to do about that. But... um you can I mean, because you can't compare really the the first record we did mm-hmm. to the shit that we're doing now. Like mm-hmm. it's we're I don't know, but um, I have a lot of ideas for the new uh, Acadiana Trace already. Besides the two songs I'm writing and recording in November, I have some other shit. Hell yeah! Uh, when you guys play live, like, is it how many members? Is it a three piece? It's a four. It's four. four. Piece, yeah. So two guitars. I play guitar and sing. Bobby plays lead guitar. Steven plays bass. And Chad plays drums. Steven Jordan? Yeah. That boy's in so many bands. Yeah, him and Bobby. Bro, I see his name on, like, 
most <laughs> bands about playing like some instrument. He's good though, dude. He's the fucking Spieven dude. He's the tits. Yeah. He's cool, dude. He's a cool dude. Mm-hmm. I uh, he just popped up out of nowhere for me, but he's a homie. Yeah, I didn't know who he was until he wiggled his way into your band, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I just woke up one day and Bobby's like, "Hey, I got a bass player." All right, dude. I'm like, cool, Shout out cool, Spieven. Hell yeah, um, cool man. So if there's one thing that I guess people should or that you'd want them to take from your music, you know, what would that be? Hit you with the real questions. I don't know. I just I want people to just dive deep into. I just want people to get the same thing I've got from listening to my favorite bands, like you know, the nineteen ninety nine LP, mm-hmm. Deja and Tindu, Devil. I want people to just get all of that and. Hell yeah! yeah. Um, you guys have any shows booked right now? Okay, so Southport, September twenty third. With like those bands I was telling you about earlier, mm. the um, out of state bands mm. with uh, it's a it's a real rock club. Oh okay. Gig. Cool. Then we're playing with Doctors September twenty fifth. I don't know if I should say that or not because it's not announced yet. But we're playing with the homies and Doctors. Cool. Um, there's a band called Challenger Deep, a touring band. We're gonna be playing with them. This is all in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh cool. yeah. Yeah. This this is going to be at Howlin' Wolf. On October 11th, and we'll be going out to Homa at the Intracoastal. Who y'all playing, playing with at the Intracoastal? With Dio, How High the Moon, and a buddy of mine's band, uh, Modern Healthcare. Word. Have you heard of them? No. Where's he from? They're, I believe, Hammond. Okay. Yeah, my friend, one of my best friends. He's good friends with one of my closest friends. Hell yeah. So he's a cool guy. Yeah, he plays drums for them. So, Fuck yeah. Yeah, they cool. should be good. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Well, I'm glad uh I'm glad you came back to it and now you're seems like you guys are hitting it harder than ever. Yeah. And Thank uh you. Born Again's dope. Everyone check it out. Uh we'll play a song to uh to leave you guys with. What song should we play? Um you can play I Feel Pathetic. All right. Well, thanks for coming, T. Absolutely. That was uh, Tristan from Acadiana Trace, yeah. and uh, now this is I Feel Pathetic by Acadiana Trace. Peace. Thank you.
promise that I'd call if 